So what is keeping us stuck then in eating and being in food prison? And this is actually the undeniable urge to eat. And urges come from um, your limbic brain, your survival brain, being in a space of um, talking to you. And often, like people, my clients often say they hear voices in their heads. Some have said it's a demon. Some have said they feel possessed. And that's where I came up with the food zombies because um, this is your survival part of the brain that keeps talking to you in a, uh, a way that convinces you you need to eat. And it tells you, ah, oh, you know what? Just have one little piece more. You know, you can start again on Monday. You know what? Um, you've been so good this week. You deserve this. All these little um, voices in the in your head um, is part of the survival um, uh, center in the brain, and the reason why it's doing that is because there's chemicals that get released every time you overeat, and you're not supposed to. So the first chemical that gets released is serotonin from getting this food, um, and you know, like getting the sugar that your body needs. So you get the sugar rush but you get serotonin, which is this feel good feeling. And the brain loves that, you know, your body loves feeling good. So it's going to ask you to repeat the same behavior of eating because it knows it's going to get that serotonin. That's a beautiful, loving feeling. The other thing that happens is because you've made food such a, much the enemy, all of a sudden you're stepping into the forbidden. And when you step into the forbidden, you raise your cortisol and your um, adrenals, and the body loves that sometimes. It loves a little bit of danger. And so you get this rush of all these chemicals happening when you do eat. And that's why people, that's why this keeps happening. And the way to work with them is um, to under, start recognizing that it's there. Because often my clients say to me, well, I just eat. And then like a couple of weeks later, they start recognizing these thoughts that trigger um, and these urges that actually trigger you to eat. And these can come from anything. And again, they are specific to you. They are not um, something that I can, you know, say there's five or 10 specific triggers, but in general, they come from three main factors. The first one is hunger. And this is when you haven't nourished your body properly. You've been starving yourself or you've been on this restrictive diet. So, um, and sometimes it's even just maybe you haven't restricted, but you're, you're not, you're eating a lot, but you're not nourishing your body um, in a proper way. So you're not getting that balanced um, nutrients that we, do, what, that we need from food. Second of all um, is emotional factors. So we all somewhere in our lives start um, eating from an emotional perspective. We've been taught as babies when we cried, our parents would first try to see if we were hungry. Um, and so, but we might not have been hungry. Maybe we were actually feeling an emotion. We didn't know what to do with it. So we'd cry, but we would get this beautiful, delicious milk uh, that's soothing and calming and that's really our foundation of learning that food can be calming and comforting. So whenever we feel an emotion that's overwhelming and something we cannot deal with, this is where we actually bring in that, that memory of that soothing that food will give us. And that's why we reach for food. And especially now when we're feeling overwhelmed and anxious, that's a feeling that no one wants to feel. It's so uncomfortable and we know we'll get comfort out of food and it's distracting us for a couple of moments out of what we actually, what's actually going on for us. So that's what's um, um, from an emotional perspective. Third is habits. So somewhere along the line, you were either like uh, out of hunger or emotionally, you were triggered to eat and you've got those chemical reactions. You've got those beautiful um, sensations that the food gave you um, at that moment in time. So the reward pleasure senses in your brain when, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I'm going to do that again because I want to feel that again. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm going to eat again at two o'clock, even though I've just eaten, I'm going to have some sugar because it makes me feel amazing. And that's where these urges become stronger and stronger because we actually keep 
um, cementing into those behaviors of eating all the time. So I'd love to know from you, um, like if you wanted to put in the comments, um, where do you think your urges are killing you the most? Is it in your, are you, is it coming from hunger? Is it coming from emotional? Or do you think it is uh, in the, um, the habit space? I can't see where's comments. I'm sure it will pop up. Anyway, oh, there we go. We've got one comment. Occasional hunger, yes, and comfort. Okay, so <laughs> that's all right. Uh, yeah, so definitely this is um, where we often don't think about hunger being a trigger. You know, like most people, most of my clients, when I tell them that hunger stems to actually probably 80% of binge eating comes from hunger and not like malnourishment, um, they are shocked because they're like, oh, but I eat all the time and I binge all the time. And, but that's where um, we need to get really clear on cementing those in. So how did the food zombies come around? Uh, basically, these undeniable urges to eat has like plagued my clients, they've plagued me but they've showed up in specific ways for um, most clients. And um, that's where I've made up these little characters. It might sound silly, but it's very relatable for, for most people. They can understand when I go through these. So we'll go through them now in um, a little bit more detail. 